What's up everybody, Terrell Friday here with Future DDS. Tyler Brown here with Future DDS. And today we're gonna go through year by year how to crush dental school. Yep. Let's do it. first time visiting our channel, what Terrell and I do is we basically help pre dents get into dental school as well as show everybody what it's like to be a dental school student. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button below as well as the notification bell so that you know whenever we shoot new content. All right, y'all. So now that we're fourth year dental students, we've really been sitting back and thinking about how long this well, actually, how quick this four-year journey has been, but it's been a long, it's been a long road, and we kind of want to give you guys a little bit more insight on how you can go about uh, crushing each individual year of dental school. You know, when we look back and we're, we're actually going through things, we don't necessarily understand what we're taking away, different skills that we learned, and different things we wish we could have done differently. But now that we have a little bit more time to think back and reflect, we're going to give you guys everything that we learned. So, year one, uh, for most schools, I know things have changed or whatever it may be. But uh, first year pretty much is a lot of didactic study, so you're gonna be in classes a lot. Um, and so with this being said, first year you should probably try to get your GPA as high as possible. Look, trust me, like this was <laughs> this was definitely that year that I know I wish that I had uh, focused even more so on my studies because it only gets harder, right? It only gets harder. So make sure that you really focus on your studies to get some type of strong foundation as well as you know a lot of people come into dental school well, not a lot but some people come into dental school knowing that they want to specialize in whatever right um and if you haven't that's great you know you don't need to have that kind of figured out before you get in but i would say first year you want to kind of start um you know just kind of looking around talking to certain people um if you have different specialty programs within your school i would go and talk to those specialty programs things of that nature because realistically that the start if you do want to say you want to do endo you can start networking now. You know, now that you're actually yep. in dental school, <laughs> in that first year, you can still and talk to the endo department or, or start reaching out to endodontists in the area to go shadow and things of that nature. So I will start to kind of just kind of taste a little bit of everything and, and do a little bit more extra research because granted, you will get that experience, uh, the shadow experience later on, but just having the upper edge and kind of knowing your trajectory of where you want to go, I think is very important. It's something that you should definitely handle your first year. Now for second year, things get a little bit tricky. One of the biggest things and, and one of the hardest transitions for most dental schools is that second year you really start piling on those dental courses. So on top of having a lot of those didactic courses that you you may have taken before, you may be, may be sort of a review for you, these are very novel classes, things you've never seen before, things you've never, never done before. You're stacking labs on top of that, as well as just the overall volume of things you have to kind of process through starting to assist in clinic you know, uh, doing th these high complex process things that you've just seen for the first time or this endo case or this removable denture case on top of still having to finish up those, you know, those higher level didactic courses, maybe the medicine course, which is heavily farm based and is, is pulling things from all these classes that you took before. So it's, it's, it's definitely a whirlwind. I'll, I'll say that much. Um, I think that you can kind of find or get renewed by feeling like you're, you're doing things that are new. Like you've been trying so hard to get to dental school you finally feel like you're in dental school and it's not just like a, a glorified version of a master's program. Yeah, a master's program or something similar to that. So, you know, you get a little taste of, of the hand skills their first year with the waxing up competencies or you might start operative depending on what school you're at. You might even start assistant depending on what school you're at. But for the most part, this is where the bulk of it is gonna come in second year. And I think this is where you can kind of transition and really start to learn what you love about dentistry or within dentistry you know, if you like a specialty, you can kind of tap into it and see if it's something that you really enjoy, something that you really want to continue to pursue. Or if you try a new class and you find out that you like perio a little bit more than the ortho, then you can start to make a transition. And like Tyler said, first year, just really start diving into learning more and getting more enrichment in that specific field of dentistry. So. Yeah, and so even with regards to that, like what I wish I had done, um, while I was going through all these classes, uh, I wish I had taken like a almost like a mini notebook right so when i'm going through operative and you know i'm learning the procedures to do a, a simple filling i wish i had just written down a simple checklist and kept that there right so that when it was time for me to do it in actual clinic i could just go to this resource that i had and just have it right there whereas like now or i guess what third year i was going back now i have to go through all the lectures and look up every single little thing um and so with that being said i would do that for all classes with complete dentures 
uh, with uh, fixed pros, all these different things. Um, I, I think that while you're going through the class, it's a lot easier to really absorb the information and kind of make your own template of what you need to do while, when you get in clinic. And that would have helped me out a lot. It would have saved a lot of time instead of me having to go through all of the hundreds of lectures that we have to find the procedure. Um, another little tip is, like I said, to actually really pay attention, right? And ask certain questions. And, and granted, <laughs> you'll never really know because you're not doing the actual procedure. So like, there will be stuff that come up while you're doing the procedure that you'll be like, oh, I need to ask a teacher or faculty after the fact. But, um, you know, something that we did, and, and I think a lot of situations are changing as far as like integrated systems or whatever it may be, but I feel like we had so many courses that I was almost like learning, 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 and I would just have to like learn, dump, learn, dump, learn, dump because there was so much going on and I wish I had taken the extra, you know, uh, maybe even 20 minutes a day just to review the lesson again, just to kind of, you know, put over that, that layer of submit, you know, and so that I wouldn't have to have, uh, go back so much in my third year. And, and granted, you're always gonna have to do that, but I just wish I had a little bit, uh, I had did my due diligence just a little bit more when I was sitting down Focusing only on classes and granted, I know some schools are different, but um, we start clinic third year But if you had the time to just focus on classes I would literally lock in learn the procedures and even watch a lot uh, like a couple of videos on the procedures I know your school is going to give you all some demonstrations or whatever it may be But there's a this is a gr uh, amazing thing called on um, YouTube, right? So, so <laughs> you can literally type in okay what are the steps for complete dentures? Boom. And, and granted, you're watching it on your uh, your faculty's presentation, whatever it may be, but you also will see it again on YouTube. And you can watch, you know, tens of, of, of different procedures the same way. So I would do that just to really, really learn these procedures and kind of let that sink in a little bit. Boom. So traditionally, third year is when you really, really start getting into clinic. A piece of advice that I would love to tell people, and granted, um, people have told me this as well before, before we started, but... I would front load as much as possible. Man. I saw a lot of people, um, you know, take their time to get warmed up in the clinic, which of course is great. And I think your school is gonna make you do that anyway with regards to, you know, you being able to just like only book exams or whatever it may be. But you know, I, I think that a lot of the time, even with the exams, right? I thought of exams as being the pure like entryway and I'm like, I'm trying to do operative. I'm trying to get to these actual procedures. I'm trying to get to attractions. I'm trying to run past it. In the grand scheme, those exams might be the most important That's like part. Of this literally, year. literally, you yeah. being able to treatment plan is huge. Yeah. And so, if you have the ability to to book, um, you know, three patients a day. Granted, you might not want to do that every day because you will get burnt out. But yeah. you know, I would say minimum two patients a day, minimum, and stay in clinic. You know, I think a lot stay of people locked in. stay locked in. A lot of people watching this video, uh, I think we will be. Uh, uh, not past the COVID uh, pandemic, whatever it be, but I think a lot more people will be vaccinated. It'll be a lot safer. I think things will be a little bit more normal, right? So if you have the ability to book patients and be in clinic, be in clinic and start knocking out those requirements. Just knock out as many as you can yep. um, because we've seen a lot of our classmates, you know, uh, they didn't necessarily do that. And granted, when everything kind of shut down and was it like March, early March, you know, they were just then starting to get headed into things. Whereas now, you know, we missed however much time. Yep. They're kind of scrambling now to get all the requirements needed. So, so definitely front load yourself while you have that energy, while you're super excited, while you're not worried about finding a job or applying for residency or doing all these different things. Yep. And, and make sure you are in clinic as much as possible. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, you know, just to piggyback off that, Try not to be timid going in because, you know, I know everyone's going to be a little bit nervous. You know, you finally get to see patients. You're kind of on your own for the first time. But this is a time where you can really, like, crystallize that information that you were learning second year. So a lot of that stuff that we were talking about where, like, you're just trying to learn and dump, learn and dump, learn and dump. This is the time where you can actually implement and really understand, like, oh, this is what they were talking about when they were talking about has to set this long. Oh, this is what they were talking about when they said clear canal space. Oh, this is what they were talking about when they... They were talking about doing a uh, probe imperial charting, you know, so little things like that that help you with that initial and, and, and learning, you know, we always talk about this, like learning how you learn best is one of the key things. So if you can learn how you learn best early first year, second year, you can really maximize that third year when you're like, OK, I learned best by having a professor walk me through the first time. I learned best by going out there, trying it first, and then going and talk to the professor. I learned best by reviewing the procedure the day before. I learned best by, you know, reviewing the procedure after I tried it in clinic. Whatever it is that will help you to maximize and really like turn that, that progression curve real parabolic and, and really get you learning, 
that's what you want you to focus on and that's what you really want to start locking in on you know and the best way to learn is by doing so like Tyler said just try to lock in as much as you can try to be in there as much as possible and you know I even even then if you can't go and book a patient go upstairs to a PG and assist go up to postgrad go to the residence and, and learn from them <laughs> excuse me <laughs> uh, but yeah so uh, but yeah if you if you can just make sure you're in there make sure you're staying diligent because this is the time where you're transitioning from being a student to a clinician and now for fourth year fourth year is kind of like the culmination of dental school by this point you're pretty much you know traditionally you're 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 you've been in clinic for a year you're kind of solidified you maybe well you pretty much taken all your classes that's one thing you have in third year too you do have a few other classes but again this is just to help crystallize so it's like a lot of classes that are putting a few pieces of dentistry together. It's a more complex case-based course where you're, where you're actually going through, you know, learning the procedures through like specific cases, different things of that nature. But fourth year, you're pretty much exclusively in clinic. You're only pretty much seeing patients. You're going on rotations. You're doing these different things. Uh, if, you, if your school is doing it, you're doing going on externship and you're finishing a lot of those requirements. But this is the time when you can really hone and kind of uh, learn your your dental philosophy, so, so to speak. Kind of learn, okay, I like to do crowns. Okay, uh, you know, I've spoke to professors for this past year doing certain type of cavity preps or certain type of operative, operative uh, procedures where I know I'll learn better or I know better when I'm going into practice. Okay, this is a large filling uh, that's close to the pulp you know, from the occlusal, okay, maybe I might do a crown on this instead of trying to do a four surface, you know, um, you know, restoration. So it's different little things like that where you start to learn your philosophy. You really start to get what you like about dentistry, what you plan on doing, what you're good at, what you're bad at, things that you really know you need to focus on to get better so that once you really step out there and you're, you know, you're on your own, you're working on your own license and different things of that nature, you're not, you don't necessarily have the anxiety of, okay, I have to think about every single step. It's more of a fluid process of, okay, bring them in, exam, comprehensive exam, okay, I've seen this before, I've seen something like it before, I kind of know how to approach it, and then from there, everything else is, you know, you learn through experience. So, you know, once you get that foundational, okay, I know exact, I know what I'm doing, you're, you're only gonna get better from there. So this is a part of that, just, you know, exploring different techniques, trying different materials, trying different, you know, working with different faculty members, and really building that tribe of, you know, people that'll, that'll help build you and grow you into a better clinician going forward, so. 100%, 100%, and even on top of that, you know, I think that um, something that you all have been developing throughout the other three years, um, really staying organized, right? I think that this is the time when, um, you know, you are applying to residencies, you are, uh, or, or jobs, which is a whole, you know, that's a whole other process. Uh, you're taking your licensing exams, you're, you're making sure that all your requirements are completed. I think fourth year is, is the pinnacle of it's time to be organized um, because there's a lot of moving pieces. There's a lot of moving pieces that all come together on graduation. So really stay on top of it. Um, another thing that I would kind of suggest or a little hint um, is to really have some self-reflection, right? I think that um, we hear so much about what student number A did, or student number B did, student number C. I think that this is really the time to talk to yourself, you know, and really think about what it is that you want. Where do you want to live? What are you willing to sacrifice? You know, all these things are super important because you're making a, a major decision. Now, your first job isn't like the, the biggest decision you will ever make, but you know, it is the first step um, in your career. And, and you want to make sure that you're doing your due diligence of, of speaking to yourself, speaking to whatever program or whatever job that you're doing and really making sure that it's a good fit for you. I don't care if, I don't care what student A says. I don't care what Terrell or I do, you know, like don't follow our footsteps. You know, hopefully you all have, have learned throughout this entire process that it's really, you know, this is this is your movie, this is your world, you know, and, and you are the, you're the director of your own movie. So literally, um, talk to yourself. And I've seen a lot of people kind of following the footsteps of other people. Um, and, and I've seen that fail a lot of the time. So lo know yourself, talk to yourself, and do what's best for you and your family. Yeah, y'all, so those are you know some of our, our uh, keys to success for each year of dental school. Um, and you know, if, if any of you all have anything or any great lessons that you've learned throughout your D1, D2, D3, D4 year, please, please feel free to share them in the comments. Um, we're sure everybody watching this video will, will, be, will be happy to hear and, and, and and take away some of your your little gold nuggets or whatever it may be so so please please share and if you haven't already make sure you hit that like button subscribe button and notification bell so you know whenever we post up new content that's gonna be it thank you guys see you guys next time all right y'all